idolaters because he received it from the Pope. Yeah, and, and, and the Pope during that time was um, Rodrigo Borgir or Alexander the Sixth of Rome. All right. And, uh, you know, he was a real devil, man. Uh, Columbus and him worked together, basically. All right, we done. If the Indians refuse, he may quite legally fight them, kill them, and enslave them. Since as unbelievers, they have no worth above that of any heretic. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit because when Columbus came over here, they recorded that the Indians kept the laws. You know, they found records of Hebrew among them. You know? So read on. Okay. Um, and it's just by Summa de, de Jur. Geografia. Geografia que tra trata de todas la partidas del mundo. Uh, 1518. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll jump down to the next one. Under the Spaniards and the French, Inquisi um, inquisitionly courts were often established to try Indians. Nearly nine hundred Hershey heresy heresy sorry heresy trials were led held held against Indians in Mexico. During the 16th century, right. So they had, they actually had uh, inquisitional courts in uh, the New World, man. They actually had them courts in there, man, and they were tried Native Americans and you know, and all that, and they were put them to death, man. All right. The uh, yeah, just skip the bracket part. Go to hell in Mexico. Oh, Just read this part, Held in Mexico. Oh, okay. Held in Mexico in 1570, over 3,800 in Indians were convicted and hanged or burned alive for heresy. Yep. Um, according... Oh, uh, no, no, no. Really not. Um, um, so, uh, next page. You know, you have an icon right here, you have an image of uh, Spaniard devils, conquistadors, right here, putting, uh, and you got a devil right here, you know, with a Caesar Borgia cross, trying to, trying to so-called baptize the, the Israelites, the, the uh, Native Americans, you know. Okay, it says here. The Jesuit black robe missionaries spread smallpox, firearms, and alcohol among the Algonquins of eastern Canada so effectively that over three quarters of them were wiped out within a generation. Yeah, so these these fuck and there's a book. Uh, it's like there's a movie called uh, The Black Robe, I, I believe, and it's by it's basically the story of Jesuits coming to uh, America basically so these devils the Jesuits they're uh, think of them as a um, military hand of the Roman Catholic Church you know they, they try to assassinate King James you know they basically they're trained in different arts man they're training how to poison people you know how to uh, uh, kill them silently you know how to how to how to practice uh, uh, different uh, uh, martial arts you know they're basically killing agents man they go around the world and if you research about them and they do the job that they're sent to do. So they, these devils, they spread smallpox, all right? They spread firearms and alcohol among the Algonquins of Eastern Canada, all right? So we're done. I'll jump down, it says, the English, oh, it's not a highlighted part, you want me to read this? Because um, I finished yeah, this yeah, yeah. Okay. Read, read all those, basically. Okay. The English as well relied on germ warfare as a chief weapon against hostile native tribes. As described by British General um, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey 
Amherst in July 1763 in a letter to a sub subordinate regarding the local Micmacs. Um, okay, let's just get to the point in it. Okay, it says here. Shoot. Just read the whole part. I'll read it, okay. You will do to try, you will do well to try to inoculate the Indian by means of blankets as well as to try other every other method that can severe can serve the expert extirpate this accessorable accessorable race I should be very glad if your scheme for hunting them down by dogs could take effect I would rather Choose. choose the liberal liberty to kill any savage that may come in our way than to be a perpetual doubtful whether they are friends or foes. Right, so he, he would he would he would he wouldn't even have the dogs take down the natives. He would want to kill himself kill them himself, man. You know? Uh, yeah. In seventeen forty nine the Nova Scotia legislature passed a series of scalping proclamations which rewarded 10 pounds sterling to anyone who delivered the scalp of a male Micmac Indian to a local magistrate. Five pound, pounds was offered for the scalp of a woman or child. Yes, yeah, so these devils in Nova Scotia, which Nova Scotia means new black, New black land, basically. Uh, these fucking assholes, man. These devils, man. They showing you that you know the white man always says the Indians, the natives, they, they started scalping and all this bullshit, man. The white man started scalping, man. That was a system used to prove that you killed natives. And the only reason that Gaddis did it back to you, cause that's payback, an eye for an eye. You know. So these devils, they actually made scalping proclamations, man. We give you 10 pounds of, of ster sterling, man. You fucking devils, man. You have a lot to pay for, man. We're going to scalp you devils in that day. That's right. You know? Yeah. Down here it says, By 1761, over one-tenth of all registered burials in Montreal were those of Indian slaves who were called... Um, Hold on. It said Indian slaves, man. That shows you that the natives, they weren't slavery as well. So the curses in Deuteronomy 28, you niggas talk about the natives ain't, um, ain't uh, Israelites. They are Israelites, man. Of course they're Israelites. It shows you Montreal, which you niggas probably don't even know where fucking Montreal is. Okay? It says uh, one-tenth of all registered burials in Montreal were those of Indian slaves, man. Okay, read on. Who were called Panis, a duration of the name for American Pani Indians who also faced enslavement. Mm. Much of early Halifax and Montreal was built by both Negro and Indian slaves. And that's proof that we always say that on the highways and byways that we built your society, man. All right, much of early Halifax and Montreal was both built by Negro and Indian slaves. Showing you that Judah and, 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 Is, and uh, Ephraim they're both side by side in slavery, man. All right, we done. Although the um, colonial authorities preferred the latter because of their cheap av availability. Right, which is the Indians. All right. Further, the crown had granted the Roman Catholic Church absolute um, hegemony hegemony in lower, lower Canada, Quebec, to operate schools, hospitals, and civic life in return for assuring a domestically um, tranquil populace. This power allowed the Catholic Jesuit order 
to establish the first boarding school among Indian nations. During the 1820s, a practice soon copied by the Anglican Church in Upper Canada, Ontario. Right, we're, we're in the province of Ontario as well. We're in, we're, we're in Toronto, Ontario. And that's why we're exposing you damn devils, man. All right, and and the boarding schools were demonic as hell, man. We we met Gadites before that told us during the boarding schools and what kind of madness went on. If you watch a documentary called um, uh, what is it? Without repentance. Yeah, yeah. Without repentance. Without, yeah, I think it's called without repentance. Unrepentant. Unrepentant. Man. It's called unrepentant. Uh, Canada's genocide, by Kevin Annette. He exposes the whole thing about it. He was a he was a, a what is he? He was a priest. And basically, he started t uh, letting, letting natives come into the church and talking about what happened to them. And basically, they revoked him. You know, he couldn't get a job anywhere in Canada. Now, he's this book is actually by him. You know? He could be a Jake, too, because, shit, he brings out the truth. And he, he got caught hell, man. He lost his whole family and everything. The church paid his, his wife to divorce him, take his kids. You know? So, he's bringing out the facts. So, you know, we done. Where the Indians boarding school, um, a practice soon copied by the Anglican Church in Upper Canada, Ontario, where the first Indian boarding school, the Mohawk Institute, was established in Brantford in 1832. Mm -hmm. Within the within the dec the decade following Confederation, Canada created the legal and police system to contain native populations as part of their long term extermination. The Royal North West Mounted Police forerunner to the RCMP in eighteen seventy three. Um, Indian Act in uh, and the Indian Act in 1876 both of these institutions were designed to force Indians off their land onto reservations and eventually into residential schools to clear the path westward for the expanding Canadian Pacific Railway created in 1881 to solidify, solidify. solidify Canada east to west through massive immigration and settlement. Right, so they made... The, that whole shit about the police and all that shit, that's nothing... That's like a whipping stick of the Rothschilds and the elite. You know, they made the RCMP, which is the Royal Canadian Mounted Troop. Or it's like the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which was, which was called the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. You know, uh, um, th their stories about how they, they they came on gunboats and and took native kids and put them in the residential schools and and the parents couldn't do shit because it was an act. It was passed. Uh, uh, it's called the Indian Act in 1876, where they could take your kids and put them in the residential schools. So that's why that's the only reason the RCMP was around, man. This is literally, um, um, how you call kidnap natives, man. You know, read on. Just jumping down. Um, Indians on reserve cannot own their own land. Elect free. Hey, in that, in that some man, Indians on reserve cannot own their own land. That's that's some fucking. Uh, that's some oh, hell, man. <laughs> you know, read on. Elect free and independent governments conduct their own business affairs. So they can't have their own businesses. So who the hell is up in the res res reserves s selling them rice and all that shit and food? It's some other nations, man. You know, we done. Or even provide adequately for their children. Right, so that shows that they, you can't have your own business, but some fucking dirty East Indian or some fucking dirty gook or African can come here, you know, under under refugee status even. Open up their own fucking um, business, man. Their own convenience store, whatever it be, restaurant. And they don't speak two fucking words of English, man. 
You tell him, you tell him, give me a, you know, give me a ginger ale. 